Hello everyone, today I'm working on a crucial MX500 SSD that is not detecting in the customer's motherboard. The customer said they also put a new SSD to replace this and the motherboard's not working with new SSDs anymore either. So, let's take a look. So I've got it hooked up to my power supply and I've got it on this channel here. So I'm just going to turn it on and see what's happening with the input voltage. So I'll turn that on there and straight away we can just see a steady 1 watt or 1.1 watts of current flowing in. So that's an obvious short circuit. Let's have a probe on the board. We've got two keys on this M2 SSD. That's because this is a dual interface version. This is the B key, and that's for SATA. This is the M key, and that's for PCI Express. Now, if we look at the B key, we've got six pins on this side. That's our ground side. That's our negative voltage side. And same thing with the M key side, there's five pins here, one, two, three, four, five. And they're also the negative or ground pins for the PCI Express side. If we flip it over, now we're mirrored, so the, B, the SATA B key has flipped to this side and it's got five pins on the reverse. And the first two pins on the outside is our 3.3 volts in. Uh, similar with the voltage input on the PCI Express side. So with my multimeter connected to the ground, I'm going to test the voltage in pins and see if that's where the short to ground is on the main voltage input. And yes, it is. So the main power of this SSD is shorted to ground. We have a short circuit. Now, there's no electronics on this side um, for voltage regulation. We need to go back to this side. On this side, we can see two voltage regulators on this one. We've got this one here and a little one down here. If we test if any of these capacitors are shorted to ground, we're getting a beep that's telling me that both sides are shorted to ground. I'd say most of these capacitors, especially around the voltage regulators, uh, they'd be decoupling capacitors with the voltage input and voltage output of the regulator that stabil stabilizes the power. They're all shorted to ground. So just off camera, I have put a thermal camera over this and I've found that the heat is coming from this one. So I'm going to remove it and see if our short to ground disappears. Just while my hot air gun's heating up, I'll put a bit of flux on here. I want it to be at temperature so I can get in and out quite quickly. Now we're going to check if our short to ground has been removed. Up here with these capacitors. Much better. Okay, so all the capacitors are no longer shorted to ground. We'll check that voltage input pin and we'll see if the direct voltage, um, can you see up there, yeah, these uh, first few pins, that's our voltage in again, so they're now cleared. So that is our problem, this little um, LDO. So I've got a few options to fix this. This is a little thing here. I can either steal one from another spare SSD 
which I'm not sure I do have any of these crucials. I thought I had a few laying around. I can order one in, or I could maybe ask the customer if they got another SSD, or see if I can safely bypass this LDO um, just for data recovery purposes. Okay, I need some clues trying to figure out what this actually is, because often what's marked on it doesn't correspond with any data sheets. So, um, if we can get these calipers in there, precision calipers, we might be able to get an idea what it is. So, 0.95, it's a six ball BGA chip two, 0.95 by 1.1. For six millimeters. Okay, so I'm on the hunt for a replacement chip and I've only got a few clues. The chip's actually marked with 51A and then FL51, which actually doesn't mean much online. So I think it's a Texas Instruments chip, it looks like one. And based on those measurements of the chip, we did find something. So we've got a 1.4 millimeter by 0.91 millimeter. And that's known as a DSBGA, and that's also a six pin. If we look at the package outline from Texas Instruments, that does look like what we have. Six ball grids array. Um, so, I'm not sure if I can, I'm, I'm basically reading this manual to find out if I can bypass it. Let's have a go to see if we can find anything about it. Let's say it was a 51A. See if this finds anything. Package pins, not even, not a chance. Um, the second part of the chip was in caps FL. Five one nothing. So who knows even if it's Texas Instruments? Have we got any six pin components here? Um package pins, so nothing that even matches that package outline that we found. I think we're gonna have to find a donor USB, uh, sorry, a donor SSD. You are not going to believe my luck, but I've managed to get exactly the same model for spare parts. So, I am going to take some measurements, so I've got some data points to be able to test what I'm doing. I measure is this pin and this pin is 3.3 volts, and then the third one at the end here is 1.8 volts. Then we go to the bottom two pins at the right go to ground. And I don't have a signal for this pin here. I'm going to see if I can um, figure out where they end up because then I, can, then I can measure it on the good one because I can't get under the little chip. Let's turn my multimeter on. I'm just going to do continuity mode and listen for beeps. So, if I can touch my 1.8, see if I can find somewhere else to measure it. Okay. Okay, looks like I can, on the good one, test this pin for this pin. It's the same. I'm not sure about the one on the end here. Where does it go? Nowhere. Okay, over here. Okay. So we know that pin connects to this pin. And I'll double check in that one. Okay, let's get the good one. Okay, because we've got our good chip on, on our good SSD, and we can't measure this bottom left pin here, we can get it over here. 
and it doesn't have any voltage signal. I'm wondering if it's a ground pin or something to do with ground. Same again with our top right. We know we got 1.8 on the bad one. Do we have 1.8 on the good one? Yes, we do. So we've got the same 1.8 volts on the top right pin here. This bottom one looks like it goes to ground, and these two here are ground, so 1.8 volts there. If there's continuity here, there's no voltage, so I'm wondering if that's ground. With our good SSD, I've unplugged it from power, so I'm just going to check. And that's definitely a ground pin. So it looks like all three, one, two, three at the bottom, are ground. Thing I've noticed is the good working one consumes 1.2 watts of power in standby mode, whereas this one with this little LDO removed consumes 600 milliwatts, about half the, the uh, energy. Now I'm going to do a bit of preparation to these six pins. I'm just going to clean them up a bit. I'm not going to desolder them. I'm not sure how I'm going to go removing the other chip yet. I don't want to get stuck with having to re-ball this tiny little chip that's a millimetre. So I'll clean this up, make the um, pins really shiny, we'll spray a bit of ISO and let's get a little brush and just give it a little bit of a clean inside there okay those six little pins look great nice and shiny now okay let's remove our good little chip i want to be very careful with this because it's so tiny and that's the only one i've got I've got a very small nozzle, um, about four times the size of this little chip over. I can see it starting to bounce around, so we've got enough heat. I'm just going to try and lift it up. I really don't want to use tweezers. Got him. This is our bad SSD, and I'm going to put a bit of flux down on those six pins. Let's heat up the flux a little bit. And I've got my chip orientation. Okay, so the chip's there sitting in the flux. Just going to move him in. Oh, he's sticky. There we go. It's got a bit of heat there now. No, we might have to hold him. No. Let's hold him. Okay. Looks all right. I'll let it cool down a bit. And I'll make sure that it's soldered correctly. It looks good. There he is there, and it looks like the solder balls are good, they haven't shorted out each other, so let's try this out. We're ready to turn this on, and we've got nothing, and we're getting some weird flashing on the adapter, okay, that's not good. Let's have a look at it. I thought I'd test the good SSD with this little chip removed to see what happens and we're getting about 550 milliwatts. So it definitely does not work without it. It does need it. Just checking why this isn't working. So we look at the schematics I made. Here's the little chip we swapped and the one we're having problems with. 
Now we know 3.3 volts comes in this side here. That's 3.3 goes into here, these two top pins. Now earlier I said the, the whole bottom row was a ground. I've rechecked it with the good one. That is not true at all. The only ground pin is the bottom right. So this, that's ground and the beep test shows me that's ground. So we know we're on ground. But these two pins we can just see come into here and we've got a short to ground. So the 3.3 volts is coming through the chip and go on the ground and that's why it's not working. I'm going to take this chip out of circuit again. I will say that probably the soldering underneath may have shorted something out. Maybe the chip got damaged, but I need to take it out of circuit. Let's start. We've got a bit of flux ready to go. I've got my hot air gun up to temperature. I'll wait for that to get nice and hot before I get the tweezers in there. I don't want to damage it. I can usually tell it's up to temperature with the solder starting to bubble beneath it and around it. There she goes. Now that doesn't look like there's a short to ground, but let's have a look again. There's no signs that this little chip was soldered incorrectly. It looks okay. So I'm going to check those capacitors again with the multimeter. See if that short to ground has disappeared. Uh, probably confusing you that I keep changing the orientation all the time. Let's move it back this way. I like this way the best. So the chip's out. Um, let's check our ground on one side with the multimeter. Now, remember the 3.3 in here? That's good. This is the ground side. 3.3. We crossed. Okay, we've got a short on these 3.3. That's why I thought it was a ground circuit. That is not true. I've... Okay, we've got a short to ground. So that little chip is not the problem. We've got something else shorted to ground. We're going to have to figure it out. The problem is we have a short to ground and I don't think it's this capacitor here and for some reason this little resistor in here goes short to ground. If I flip it over, I'll point to it up here, C637 is directly under it and seems to be on the same circuit. It also looks a bit discolored up close on the microscope. So I can't find anything on the thermal camera. I'm going to start unpicking a few capacitors and see if the short goes. But I'm definitely going to get C637 off first. It does look a bit weird and it is directly underneath it. Let's put a little bit of flux. Let's get my little tweezers and I'm going to get in there nice and tight. This is the short to ground eliminated. That's ground and that's still short to ground. So this capacitor here, if we test him, it's shorter to ground. No, that's all right. Let's get in a bit better. No, that capacitor is definitely shorter to ground. Okay, so we definitely have a short to ground here and we don't on the good working one. So I'm going to start removing capacitors and testing them individually. This is the one we just removed and as we expected, he's okay. So we'll hold on to him as well. Um, I will check the circuit again. just in case. So that was removed from here. Just a little ah, uh, what's that say? What does that say? 
It says R or something. R8 maybe. Hmm. I injected some more power having a look under the thermal camera and ended up putting almost about 2 watts into this line injecting from this cap and I think I found, finally found it this capacitor here and it was definitely hiding itself from me quite well so I'm gonna pop it out I think I found it okay it's out first let's test the capacitor see if it is a uh, short circuit Stuck on my tweezer there. Let's get him off and drop him down. Uh, let's turn that off so you can hear me better. So, all right, let's have a look. That's definitely shorter to ground. So, if we, if I go back to where it took that other capacitor off, that's the ground. And the short's gone. So I'll check on the other side. I'm probably going to have to refurbish some of those capacitors I took off. But that is it. Finally found it. I was about to give up. No, I was never going to give up. Have a look on the top side. And just double check. That's our ground. That is ground. And the other side here is no longer shorted to ground. So there we go. It was that little capacitor. Okay, let's let's put this capacitor back in that I removed and I knew it wasn't a problem squish him in there Okay, he's in. Now I need to put this little black component. I think it's a resistor. There's an R written on the PCB, so I could measure it, but. I'm gonna put our little um, chip back in. But to be honest with you, now that I kind of know how the schematics work, I could bypass it. So if this is going to annoy me, which it already is annoying me, then I will bypass it. But we'll get in position. Let's get my hot air up to temperature. And I'll just bump him in a bit better. A lot of surface tension there. Wow, that's annoying. All right, see what happens if we get a bit of heat. No, we don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to move around so I can hold it in place. Because I've been working on this a bit. My arm's getting a bit tired. Here we go, that looks all right. Okay, it's getting sucked into place almost. There we go. Put a bit of heat, make sure things move into place correctly. With a bit of luck we got it, I'll test it. Um, let that cool down. So I'll check that we don't have a short to ground. I'm just going to swing this around, easier for me to probe with the multimeter. Okay, so ground side no longer do we have a short and this little resistor isn't shorted either so hopefully this should work now I know I keep saying that but it should work now let's turn it on oh my god it's come ready let's see if it detects oh no it's going busy that's not good, trying to read the ID. It's definitely better than last time though. No, it's gone busy. Um, 
more work to do maybe Let's turn it off again it's very quick to come ready which is a bit a bit weird okay let's just keep an eye on it for a bit putting it back on the lab power supply we're getting 1.3 watts which is what we saw the working one do but I want to get some measurements uh, we'll put my homemade schematics up on the screen and let's have a look we should be getting 1.2 volts on both sides here yes we do we should be getting 3.3 down here yes we are um, down here 3.3 yes we are um, we should be getting 1.5 here yes we are um, and 1.5 on this yes we are let's come down a bit further so the input here should be 3.3 yes that's 3.3 and the output now should be 3.3 yes it is we're getting 3.3 here so this little chip swap has worked um, we should be getting 1.8 here yes we are and down here we should be getting 1.8 yes we are everything looks good I'm, I haven't replaced those capacitors so it could be going into safe mode it's probably detecting an issue with it 3.3 um, up here yes we are 3.3 uh, yes okay so it was more important to know that we were getting our voltage here which we are this must have worked three volts three volts that resistor is pulling it down a bit now just got a replacement capacitor from another board whoop there she goes We need to top up the solder on the other capacitor because I removed it. So I want to make sure we got a good connection there. A little bit more flux. Let's get some solder, whatever's easiest to find. There we go. Now let's try and top him up. Okay, very good. What I just notice is we've got a short circuit on this one now. This is dead short to ground. It was not short to ground earlier. And if we compare it with our working one, it should not be shorter to ground. It provides some kind of power to each of these memory chips. If you have a look, we've got one, two, three, four memory chips there. Five, six, seven, eight memory chips. So I think this is some kind of power input for each memory chip now the one that we removed was down here that's no longer shorted to ground that's good but the one next to it is shorter to ground and these capacitors run for each chip so they must provide voltage for each chip so now we've got another short I found the short circuit this capacitor here at the end has died so we got two groups of two and I'm pretty sure it's a 3.3 volt and I think this is a 1.8 volt power rail for these little NAND chips for the memory chips so this one here lit up on the thermal camera I'll pick him out and let's see if the capacitor itself is shorted with the multimeter so I'll grab that and we'll just probe each side of it no nope. wonder if I got the wrong one
The short circuit's definitely gone. Let's have another look at this capacitor. Oh yeah, that capacitor's definitely shorted. Let's turn that off. So, we've removed him out, so it must be 1.83. 1.8, 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. Pretty good. Okay, they're both in. The good news is we got all the electronics working. The SSD isn't functioning 100% right because there's damage done to the firmware. The main CPU chip on this SSD is a SM2258 and this is a common off-the-shelf chip that all vendors use and they upload their own firmware to it. Um, we've got some damage done and we're making a new translator to get access to it again. If you're new to this channel, welcome along. I upload regular data recovery videos. If you want any more information on this particular model, click the links in the description, including the little schematics I made. I've got a little bit more work to do yet. I need to see if I can build my own loader from this exact model. The one I'm using at the moment is a little bit out, therefore it's not giving me the best results. So I'm going to keep working away on this so I can get some data back for the customer. Yeah, it's a little bit more technical. I did have to physically put this SSD into safe mode. There's some little grounding pins on the SSD. I'll upload a photo on my webpage. Click on the description below. Anyway guys. I shall see you again next time.